Ethereum 2.0 is all the buzz around the cryptocurrency space and Ether 2.0 is coming out later this year. We launched the beacon chain and with that comes proof of stake with Ether 2.0 moving away from proof of work. And we have companies like Coinbase that are allowing their users to get in staking pools. So in this video, we're gonna talk about a little bit, an overview of proof of stake versus proof of work. And then also how you can set up your Coinbase account to actually stake your Ether and get some rewards for that. Now, of course, there's pros and cons with that, and we'll talk about that in the video. In regards to Ether 2.0 and where we're at on the timeline for upgrades, we had the Beacon Chain launch closer to the beginning of the year, and the merge where that staking system is merged with the current mainnet of Ethereum is supposed to happen at some point in 2021. So what's the big deal with proof of stake versus proof of work? Both of these are just consensus protocols, which if you don't know exactly what a consensus protocol is, it's essentially a set of rules that the blockchain runs and you have people validating that the transactions are real and no one's double spending. Basically, it's a way to make sure that no shady activity is going on within a blockchain. So whether that be Ethereum or Bitcoin, that's kind of what proof of work is currently doing. Here's a neat little diagram that explains the difference between proof of work and proof of stake. Right now, Ethereum is running proof of work. So you have these supercomputers that are figuring out cryptographic puzzles. And by doing so, they're validating transactions and making sure the blockchain is running smoothly, as well as in order to stoop the system or have an issue with transactions, you would have to have someone control a ton of computer power in order to attack the network. With proof of stake, instead of having a supercomputer, it's all about how much Ethereum you actually have and how much you're putting out there to potentially lose. Also with proof of stake, there isn't a block reward. The validators are just paid in transaction fees. And lastly, you would need a ton of money or ether in order to attack the network. So you would need 51% of all ether. So we're talking about at current prices over $200 billion. And in order to deter shady behavior or kind of messing with the transactions, if validators are approving malicious blocks or approving malicious transactions, they could potentially lose their entire stake. So one, you'd need a massive amount of Ethereum to actually kind of perform an attack on the network. And if you did that, you would lose your money. So it kind of deters people from accumulating $200 billion worth of Ethereum and then attacking the network because they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot. To summarize some of the pros for proof of stake versus proof of work, you have the staking allowing anyone to get involved, even if they don't have a ton of capital. You have staking allowing more decentralization so you don't have to worry about a nation accumulating 60% of the computing power and then attacking the network. So destroying something like Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever coin that runs on proof of work. You also have staking allowing the ability to scale a little easier. The fourth one would be the energy consumption. So people argue that Bitcoin is bad for the environment. Moving to proof of stake would fix that. One of the cons though for proof of stake is the fact that it's not as battle tested as something like Bitcoin or Ethereum with the proof of work consensus. So for me personally, the big one is just that first point. The fact that I don't have to have a million dollar mining rig next to a river that gives me free electricity or something crazy like that in order to be profitable to validate or protect the network. I can have one ether, I can have a hundred ether, it doesn't matter. I can still participate and get a return for validating and protecting the network. All right, let's get to the fun stuff where we talk about how we can make some money by staking Ethereum. And one way to do that is setting up your own node with 32 Ether at least in order to become a validator. Me personally, I'm not a super technical guy, so I would rather just join a staking pool and let someone else kind of figure it out for me for being 100% honest. And for me, one way to do that is joining a staking pool through something like Coinbase. So you can sign up to stake and you can get up to 6% APR per year for your ether stake. Hypothetically, let's say you had three ether, which at the current price of $4,170, that would be around $12,510 of current capital. Ether staking is kind of like a dividend for me. That's a way that I, th I think of it. It's basically a dividend yield. So if you take 6% of three, you'd be getting around 0.18 ether per year in rewards for 
staking your ether, which at the current value, it'd be $750. Also, if you apply something like the rule of 72, which tells you how many years to double your stack, that would be 72 divided by the 6%, which would be around 12 years in order to double your ether to six. Of course, that only applies if the APR remains 6%. The one obvious call out is that the amount of money that you're making from staking is 100% dependent on the value of Ethereum. So at 4,175, you'd be making 750 bucks. But if you just look at a month chart about a month ago ethereum was only two thousand dollars your rewards in us dollars can drastically change if ethereum goes up to ten thousand you know it's a it's a great return because you staking your ether is basically doubling down on the price of ethereum continuing to go up so the actual process for staking ether on coinbase is very simple you join a wait list they send you an email saying hey you can now stake you go to the website and you put in how much ether you want to stake and lock in the network and right now it's six percent apr so they also say this may change over time depending on the network and kind of how many validators are out there this may go down and may slightly go up it just depends the other drawback is once you stake your ether you can't get out of it until ether 2.0 launches coinbase goes on to say eventually they'll enable some way to kind of trade in and out of the staked ether but when ether 2.0 you should be able to trade out of the rewards that you're getting one drawback obviously is once you start staking you're kind of locking yourself in to ether and kind of riding the waves up and down as a long-term investor so if i'm trading Trading in and out of Ether, I don't really want to stake. But if I'm thinking as a long-term investor and I want to increase my stack of Ether, it doesn't make sense not to stake for me because I can get a certain percentage every year in Ether and have my investment compound over time. It's kind of like just the stock market where if you have a dividend and you're collecting a 5% dividend every year, and even if the stock price stays the same, you're gonna get that beautiful compound interest where it exponentially grows. The drawback being if Ether's price completely crumbles, then a 6% return on your Ether and having that compound won't be as good if Ether falls down 80% in price. You're probably also asking, hey, What's in it for Coinbase to allow people to even stake on their platform? How are they making money? Well, if you go to launchpad.ethereum.org, here's the reason why. The current APR on staking is 7.5%, meaning that Coinbase is paying out 6% and collecting that difference as the middleman allowing people to stake. So it's the ease of use and allowing you to stake yourself without having any technical knowledge, and then they skim off the top a certain percentage. Now you can be upset with that, or you can set up your own node. For me, like I said, I'm not that technical where if I screwed something up and somehow I blew up my entire stake of Ether, I'd be pretty mad at myself for losing a ton of money. So for me, I would rather use a platform like Coinbase or another staking pool, take you know a smaller percentage versus the 7.5%. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash that like button. <laughs> Kills me saying that. And consider subscribing to Main Street Wolf where we talk about cryptocurrency, investing stocks, options, pretty much anything to do with money. Thanks guys for watching and have a great day.